Hi, and welcome back to Discovering Data Flex with me, Johan Brodfeldt. Today, we're going to look at combo boxes, in particular, the parent combo box. And what might that be? Well, my intuition told me that it would be something like a parent child thing where the the regular combo box content depends on what's in the parent combo box, but that's not it. It's actually a difference in how they get data. And if you want me to make a video about um, how two combo boxes might be dependent of each other, uh, just post in the comments below and maybe I'll get to it in the future. So what is the actual difference between a combo box and a parent combo box? Well, if we look at the code over here, we um, have a uh, regular combo box here with the food, clothes, and so on. And we're going to make this one obsolescence uh, combo box, which actually is a parent combo box, but they look fairly similar. They are identical in the interface. But the difference is they use different data sources. And if you look at the regular combo box in the item data dictionary, for instance, uh, you can see that this one is using a simple list as a data source. And if we go back, press F7 to switch, uh, you can go in here and see the validation object. And here's a category validation. So here we have our categories. But you can also set this up to have a key value pair. So you have like a key value and a name value that you can use to display the content and the key is stored in the database. But there's a third option and that is that you can use a table. So you can have a validation table and that's actually set up in these code master and code type tables. If you want to enable the customers to go in and update these values that should be visible in the combo box, it could probably be done, but it's not uh, in a way where you use the regular Dataflex view to show the data or manipulate the data for that sake. Um, so you want a different approach and the combo box only allows these three. I've Try to bend it backwards and forwards, and, and it, I couldn't get it to get the data from a regular table. And that is where the parent combo comes in, because that uses a separate table to get the data. So what is the benefit of having that? Well, you could use that to let the customer go in and update the values in the selection lists. But there's a danger to that. So if you want to do that, be aware that in the future, you might end up with an application where the customer just add different items that they want. And then you probably have to clean up the mess because sometimes there are duplicates or there are um, different users who want to use different uh, tags and then internally in the organization, people agree that they should use all of these tags. And uh, yeah, it can be a mess. And um, it, in many cases, it's actually a good practice to keep the options in the code so that you can decide uh, and, and have control over what options is available. Because sometimes you might even want to have different features depending on what selection. And so you might have code for each separate selection that is available. So there are many things to think about when you decide which way to go here. But I have other videos that cover the combo boxes, the regular ones, and I'm going to link to them in the description below so you can find them. And um, we are going to look at how to use the parent combo today. So first of all, we want to set up a table. And I've actually prepared a table here, which is the obsolescence table. And I have an ID and a stage, which stage the uh, data is in or the item is in. 
and we can look at the table. And I've also added some values that I want to use here. And we close that again. Before we begin, we're going to take a look at the data dictionary. And um, in here is a nifty little feature that can save you a lot of time when you're developing applications. And that is the visual control. And you can actually use this to pick a combo, checkbox, edit, form, or spin. I'm not sure why there are not more of those here, because this is a really nice feature. But if I pick combo, you'll see when I drag down the uh, element from the uh, data dictionary or the data source, it's going to be a combo by default. Now we want to use a parent combo, of course, but um, this is just to let you know uh, that this is a smart little feature you can use. So let's go into the item view. And here, again, we want to go in and add a data dictionary. And we want to add the obsolescence data dictionary. And we got the obsolescence data dictionary here. And now, let's see, we also got the observation data dictionary there. And we also got a relation. So we set the server of the item data dictionary to the obsolescence data dictionary. And now I have my view down here. So in the bottom here, I want to add a stage. I'm just going to drag and drop. And as you see, let's see if we make this a little bit larger. You can see it's a selection box already. And now it's called Obsolescent Selection Stage Web Combo. And we can start working with this data entry component. Uh, we didn't want it to be a combo, but a parent combo. And I don't want it to be called stage, but I want it to be called um, the uh, We want to make sure that this is a little bit smaller and we want to have the label on the top so we can go in here and check the label position top. There you go. Now it's more in line with our other views. And that should be it. And now we have the table and we have the control and we have the relationships to the, the dictionary. So let's see what happens if we run this. Now we do have the items here and we can pick one. Uh, we can go into the Easter eggs and save that as new. Save, yes. And if we go to the next and go back, then we see that this is new. But here's a thing to be aware of. So if I now want to reset this to blank value and press save, and I go back and back again. It's blank. But let's have a look in the database. And uh, in the obsolescence table, we now have a new empty post here. And if we go into the item and look at our obsolescence we actually have number nine instead of number zero that we wanted. And we need to go into the item data dictionary. And here, we want to use this parent allow, null allowed for this one. Obs obsolescence.find number, choo choo. So if we have that, 
we can go back into our data source and into our obsolescence and we can hopefully delete this one shift f2 delete this line yes and then we lock it again and now if we recompile and we go back into our uh, view here now we do the same thing we set new we save we go to the next one and back now we set this one to blank save and then we go back and back again and we can see that it is blank and if we go into our data we should now see in the obsolescence that there is no new record in here and in our item the easter eggs are set to zero there is no nine in here anymore so there that is working so now we got the parent combo box working now just for good measures i want to also add the option to um, update the data for the customer and um, we do that by just creating a regular view new uh, view and we want that to be a web object and we take a web view wizard and uh, let's call that uh, o so less um, and next and that's just a simple form and we're going to use the stage don't care about the id because that's updated behind the scenes anyway and finish so here we got the uh, list but now this one is of course set to a combo box so we want this to be a regular form now we have a form so we can enter something here test and if i press save save new record we can go into the database and we can check our obsolescence table and now we got 10 test let's yeah and now we might want to delete this from the list actually so we go back in and we want to go here and find it but we cannot find it because it's not really configured to be able to be found so we need to make this uh, selectable and the way we do that is we just add a new control and that's a dialog lookup and we want it to be a web modal lookup we use a web lookup wizard let's see how that works you look up obsolescence yes stage add next next finish and then we have the stage i'm going to remove that and add another one of lessons web lookup let's compile that if that helps in any way well, we're still kind of stuck but now at least we got the values yeah now i can pick the values okay but we still cannot move back and forth here we can just stay here and that's because this actually doesn't have an index so we need to go into the obsolescence and add an index on the stage and because we might want to allow two equal stages but probably not but it could be a Good idea to put the id there, there as well uh, so let's try that and if i now reload i should be able to switch between them yes 
So now I can go back and forth and I can go in here and pick one of them. Uh, so if we now want to select this and we want to delete it, we cannot delete it. That is probably a good thing because there are uh, a lot of times where this might have been used. So they have the state test on many items. And if you delete it, do you want to delete the items as well? Or do you just want to delete the test? And what happens with the item where the test was before? Uh, you probably want to run a script or something to update all of those and change them to another state if you want to replace them. But in this case, we're just going to make an addition to force you to uh, allow this. So if you go into the data dictionary, you can see that we are adding the client file number. Uh, and this one is the, the the line that restricts what we may delete and not delete. So we have a relationship to this uh, item table, and that's why we cannot delete it. And that's the default behavior of uh, Dataflex when you have these kind of relations. So what we, what we want to do is we want to go in here and then remove client file item.file number. And if we check in here, it's a client file we're adding. Sometimes it's server file. And if you add that, then you need to remove server file. And it depends on which way you're using the relationship. And um, that will only affect this view so that you can um, actually overrule the normal behavior of Dataflex. And now we have the test. So we pick the test and then we click delete. Yes. And it seems to have been removed and it is gone. But again, be careful with how you use this. It's a quite powerful tool in deleting stuff in your database. So that's not something that I usually recommend you do without having a lot of extra verifications that this is actually what you want to do. And that's all I want to cover in this little short video. I hope it was helpful and um, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.